Coming back to our rhythm section active. Now let's look at the spawn rhythm actor function since now we understand what's a rhythm actor, right? So a rhythm actor is the physical representation of what the player needs to press, right? So what this function does is is asking you to spawn that rhythm actor, right? So if you look at the first thing this function does, is it spawns our BP rhythm actor example. It spawns this, it spawns this class. Cool, and then we set it as a rhythm, as a, as a variable. So the entire purpose of this function is to give Blueprint programmers the opportunity to spawn a class of their choosing. And then what we're doing here is we're setting properties, and then in the end, we are returning the rhythm actor we just spawned. So this is the purpose of this function, right? It's asking you, hey, spawn a rhythm actor, set its properties, then return that rhythm actor back to the system. The system will um, then handle um, moving that um, rhythm actor all the way to the judgment line and handle all the complexities. So the good thing about this rhythm tools plugin is it has both C++ programmers in mind and it has blueprint programmers in mind. So it still gives the power the blueprint programmers or designers the opportunity to change what this looks like. You can choose your own mesh here, as you can see, right? And then you can also, I want to show you how to set this um, rhythm inputs, right? Since this is a left arrow, we want this to be mapped to the left key. Okay. So let's just touch a bit on covering these um, certain properties stage, okay? So, from your um, media engine broadcaster's knowledge, you know that you have a media listener and then it passes on the track name and the media note name, right? So when the media note, mid note plays or it's triggered, so when this event is triggered and then it passes on the media note, we pass on that media note to this function and this is the exact media note that's passing in. And the reason why we are passing in this media note is that you can use it to make a decision on which static mesh is so it, it's... Um, is spawned, right? So basically, what our template does, it takes the window that's playing, and then it makes the decision um, depending on the pitch name, whether it's a C5, C4, C6, all right? So you can use whichever one you want here, but our um, our template uses the pitch name, right? So if it's a C5, we are choosing, we are taking this um, rhythm actor, right? And then we are setting the static mesh, for the middle. If it's a C6, we are taking the static mesh and then we are setting it to SM up arrow. Okay. You find these template meshes um right under meshes, with an actor meshes, right? So you can see this is a down arrow, the left, the up arrow, and then up the, the middle arrow, which which is assigned to like um enter or Q. But anyway, going back to the blueprint, this is what we are doing here. We are basically setting the mesh, right? And then after we set the mesh, remember that our rhythm actor in um, get rhythm input, it has to return an action that matches um, the, what the mesh looks like. So here we are caching, we are caching what this mesh is, it's the middle mesh, action left, this is the local variable and we are going to use it here, right? So once we come over here, we check which action um that we've set here which action is it and then if the action is middle right we then set our input action right so basically this class that you have here it'll carry the payload for what for what show and then it carries the payload of what needs to be pressed in order for this to work right what needs to be pressed in order for the player to score right so that's basically the gist of this of, of, of this of this function we set the inputs you go through it um slowly and see what happens but, and then once you're done we return it okay so we've covered uh, the rhythm section component now we need to cover the rhythm judgment box which is the box that determines if your player is getting a score or they're not getting a score right so you add two 
judgment boxes, and then you pattern them to your um, no tie way, whatever. And then the most important thing you want to look at is when we when the press when the player presses a button, for example, let's say we press the left lane down action right here, we pass in these to the process input function. I'll explain that after. But as you can see, we are passing in the input action that the player has pressed right to this function. And then we are also pressing in the judgment box for this input action, right? The judgment box for this low tie wing. So basically since this is for the left lane, this is for the right lane, right? So for the left lane, we know that all nodes have to pass through this judgment box. That's why they share this common um, variable where they are calling um, the process input function, okay? So let's go into this function and then explain what it does. Okay. The process input function passes in the judgment box and the input that the player has pressed, right? So this is what it does, right? It gives you an opportunity to um, to react when the when the player presses a button to do whatever you want to do, right? But basically, what, what the template function does, it gets the overlap overlapping with the actor, right? Meaning that um, if the actor is currently in our rhythm judgment box, right, we want to get that actor. If there is an actor, then this will fire. If there's no actor, then we don't need to process any input. Uh, we just ignore the input. You can decide to process the input here and then um, maybe tell the player that they uh, they pressed the button too early or too late or there's nothing in the box. But for this template, we haven't done anything. It's your choice, right? So if there's a there's currently something inside our our rhythm box right here, if there's a rhythm actor inside this rhythm box, right? What we want to do, we want to get right the rhythm actor, the overlapping rhythm actor. You see this? We want to get the overlapping rhythm actor, and then we want to get its input. Remember, we said the input so that um, that's part of the payload that this actor carries, right? We want to get it, right? And then we want to compare the input, which is this one, right? Let's go back to this. As you can see, the input, which is this one, you want to compare this input to the input of the rhythm actor. And if these two match, right, which is true, if they match, you call the unperfect hit event for the for the widget, which will show, which will also give the player a score or do whatever you do, whatever you want. So right here, the player got it right. Right here, the player pressed the wrong button. Right. So you go through this as um, on your own time when you want, right? Um, there's a template function for when the when the player presses uh, the button early, which is which you can connect to here if you want. But it's just showing you that there's a template function. Right now that we've covered that, um, there's this little option that you can do. For example, you can do something when the actor, when the rhythm actor enters this judgment box and when it leaves, right? When it enters right here, you can maybe spawn something or do, do, do whatever you want. So there's these events that you can, up, that you can connect to. Here, we don't connect them to anything, but I just wanted to let you know that they are available. Um, uh, the widgets, you'll find the widgets right on the, on the blueprints and then widgets. So right here. So yeah, that's, that's basically, um, the high level overview of how to use the system. Um, also, you may be wondering how can you, um, customize your rhythm lane so that they look more interesting, right? Um, for example, um, BeatStar has its rhythm lanes here. They have this purplish color, purplish white color. And uh, for a template, this it's it's, it's, ex it's actually transparent. That's not a problem. Go into your rhythm actor and then add a static mesh. Okay, this is actually exposed for the, for the designer to do whatever they want to do, right? And then just position the static mesh. Uh, let's say it's a parent of the, 
I didn't choose a static mesh, okay. Um, there's this rhythm link. It's a template. You don't have to use it, but basically, yeah, you see. You can just add a mesh that you want to add and then maybe scale it so that it fits along the okay, along the x-axis. Right. You can move because these things are just basically for display, they're not for the functionality. So the display is up to your art designer or or your blueprint programmers uh to decide how they want you know the scene to look. But basically you don't need this, but it's nice to have and it's an option, it's pretty easy to add, just add any mesh.